in the beginning uh, while going through the objects I said that every object has one tab okay so every object has one tab and one object will have only one tab right so this tab you have to create manually okay so like these tabs for all the objects you have to create one tabs okay for all the standard objects tabs are already available for custom objects tab you have to create okay so that's not a mandatory thing you can create and you can also uh, leave it hidden okay just like that record the sorry record the shit one please yeah i am recording bro okay okay that's okay yeah. <clears throat> okay okay so just like that whenever you have for every object okay for every object you have one page layout as well okay mm -hmm. for every object you have one page layout okay page layout is the way in which the um the object or the fields are displayed on the screen mm -hmm. okay so every object has one page layout but here in uh, in tabs every object must have only one tab i mean it cannot have more than one tab okay but in case of page layouts one object can have more than one page layouts okay why because if you, if in case if you want to create different different page layouts for different profiles okay let's say sales rep profile will have a different page layout if you want to have different uh, fields for uh, sales rep profile or if you want to have different fields for your manager if you want to have different section for your manager okay so based on the profiles you can create different different page layouts mm -hmm. okay so as as soon as you create one object okay it doesn't matter if you create uh, when you create a custom object okay when custom object is created okay automatically one page layout will be created okay automatically will be created okay so one page layout will be created the default page layout okay now if in case if you want to have more profiles and you want to segregate it according to the uh, sorry when you want to create more page layouts and you want to uh, like customize it according to the profiles for that you can go and you can create more profiles uh, create more page layouts okay 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 so as of now for example if you go to opportunities here okay if you go to opportunities if you open any of the opportunity here mm -hmm. see this is what a page layout is okay so how your record okay the record the fields the sections how it is displayed what all fields are read only what all fields are read write okay where they are displayed okay how many sections you have is the section like collapsible or not okay if you let's say if you edit this mm -hmm. okay if you edit this then you uh, let's say if you if you are in this field then you have to press tab how is it going like top to bottom or side see first it's going from here mm -hmm. okay tab it's coming from here top to down and then from this section again it's going this side okay if you want to uh, move the tab from let's say right to left then right to left right to left like this if you want then all that also you can arrange how many sections you want like in in the column if you want one section or two columns that all, also all those things you can arrange okay and let's say if you want uh, how many uh, like related list you want okay like related list so every object if it has any relationship it has if uh, opportunity has any children so that will be shown in the related list okay so in the previous class i told you that in the uh, parent object related list will be there mm -hmm. right in the child object the field relationship will be there relationship field will be there and in the parent the related list will be there mm. yeah so the related list how many related lists list you want which one you don't want so how they should be ordered and what all buttons you have okay what all buttons you have what all links you have so all that you can manage of your uh, depend uh, manage for your particular object so that you can manage from the page layout
okay so how the page layout will look like or let's say if you want to edit the page layout of this opportunity okay and then you have to just go to edit the layout here okay or what you can do is you can go to the handle also and you can edit the layout from here okay okay so if you edit the layout from here you can go ahead and you can change the layout if you see the fields are displayed here okay then below related lists are displayed here so you can go ahead and arrange and you can customize these fields and related list okay so even the lightning action buttons so this is for lightning section quick action sales was classic and this is for lightning okay and these are the classic buttons okay okay so if you see if you come to the top panel here you see opportunity layout is mentioned so which page layout are we editing we are editing opportunity opportunity layout okay so if you click on this there are four more opportunities okay depending on the different cloud so support cloud has different opportunity layout sales cloud has different marketing has different layout okay if you want you can arrange these uh, like uh, associate this particular page layout with different uh, clouds as well by default as of now opportunity layout is the default layout and it is assigned to all the profile and all the uh, clouds or all the applications okay if you want you can go ahead and use them so for that you have different different copies of the page layout so if you see here here so many fields are there which is in the uh, opportunity layout if you change the layout let's say support layout okay in the support layout the field the section see the sections are changed it's not it's not uh, we have like four sections in the normal opportunity page layout but here this is in the support layout only these many are required okay because maybe the support or the call center people they don't need the other fields so they have not provided if you want you can go ahead and provide those things here also okay 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 so another property about the page layout is that you can whenever you edit the page layout if you want to preview it you can go ahead and preview this page layout okay and if you see here you will have you have preview as so which profile okay and these are profiles see customer mm -hmm. support profile sales profile marketing profile so different different profile might have different permission sets mm -hmm. and different security settings depending on which what all uh, fields they have access to that will be displayed okay so right now we have not entered the security part so we have not studied that so the point is that you can uh, go ahead and organize your page according to different different profiles as well providing them different permissions okay so okay. if you want to preview as some other person like what all fields he will see and what all sections he will see so all that you can do from here page layout okay and if you uh, see here on the left side there are lots of things here mentioned so first here fields buttons then custom links quick actions okay mobile lightning action then here related list is there okay vf page is there so let's say if you want to include some vf page inside this so you click on vf pages all the page layout which uh, vf page which is actually available you can go ahead and just drag it and drop it wherever you want there one vf page will be displayed so all these buttons are totally draggable so let's say if you have fields okay if you want to add more fields here or if you want to create some section or if you want to remove some section so you can just drag it and drop it okay okay and once you drag it and drop it then it will become gray out it will gray out that means it's already there if you click on this countries see countries is already there it will be highlighted in the yellow so countries is already there so that means it's there in the page layout now if you remove it okay if you remove the countries then it will be again be available for you to drag it, drag it back okay okay so you can put it back where was it okay we put it here 
okay like that so using this you can add all the fields in the page layout or you can manage them okay where to put okay and let's say buttons so if you want to add more buttons let's say if you have created one new button okay a new custom button we have created okay and that if you want to add into the page layout so that custom button will be coming here okay always by default standard buttons are on the left side and the custom button is on the last okay so all the send buttons also you can manage and you can arrange if you don't want a couple of buttons okay you can remove them okay okay so similarly buttons uh, buttons are just like clickable buttons on which if you click some action will happen let's say edit if you click on this edit will happen if you click on this the record will be deleted cloning so just like that other buttons are there just like buttons there are something called custom links also okay custom links are like urls will be there so using uh, when you click on that particular link okay it will be like a hyperlink just like this when you click on this some action will be happened that action you can create like what action you want to happen when you click on that particular link okay so to add that custom links from when you go and create a custom link if you want to add it all that we'll see we'll see today only okay like creating buttons creating custom links how you can do that okay all that we'll see today okay okay and then if uh, this quick action is for lightning okay this quick actions and this mobile and lightning actions these are for salesforce lightning okay as of now we will not look into that so related list so all the child objects of this particular opportunity object are mentioned here okay yeah. so if you don't want some of them or if you want to arrange them you can go ahead and do that okay and apart from like arranging and all those things you can also provide permissions here what kind of permissions that you can do let's say some information on the page layout is very critical to some of the users let's say they don't want to disclose their some tracking number okay let's say they don't want to disclose their tracking number to everybody okay they want to put some security because even the uh, maybe the sales representative most of them will be new okay and they might uh, misuse it or something so in that case what you can do is you can customize the property okay you can put one security setting how you can do that when you click on this gear icon okay or the properties icon so you can make it read only or you can make it a required field if you want this particular field to be required from the page layout section you can go ahead and do that okay so every time you save it it will save only the data only if the page uh, has that particular value entered if the field has that value entered then it will let you save it or if you want to make, make it required or maybe make it read only for that particular profile they cannot go ahead and edit that those information okay in that case you can make it read only also okay 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 and let's say the properties about the section okay let's say if you want to uh, make it into change the name of the this particular section or if you want to uh, like change the columns number of columns from two to one okay and this is the flow when you press the tab if you want to move it from top to bottom like this from top to bottom then again top to bottom and top to bottom, like that if you want to arrange like that or if you if the tab works like right to left uh, sorry left to right and then left to right you can also go and customize that okay so all that you can do so if you want to create one new section here that's very simple so all you have to do is you have to drag one section okay let's say we want to create another section here with some numbers okay so what we'll do is we'll drag this section and we'll drop it wherever we want okay we'll call it maybe uh, number sections okay let's say we want it to, want to be two column and we want to be top to down okay we click ok in this number section let's say we want to put all the numbers whatever numbers is there that numbers we want to put so like revenue okay percentage probability all this we want to put let's say formula field this is also giving us number then days left to close okay discount percentage 
okay whatever the amount is there of the opportunity let's say if you want to arrange it like this okay so this was the requirement that you have to create one new section and put all the section all the number uh, fields in that particular section so that we'll be having easily we can we can go and do the calculation whatever calculation you have to do okay that was the requirement that came so what you did is you created one new section and you put all the number fields inside that section okay okay and when you quick save it okay if you save uh, quick save it it will save and it will stay in the same page okay this information is saved if you go to the opportunity now you will be able to see those changes you will see one new number section is created okay if you open any record you will see one new section is created with the number section and all the number fields are already there okay but if you save it okay if you save it then what it will do it will save and it will take you back to the previous page Okay, so if you save it, it will save you and take you back to the previous page. So this is what the difference between save and quick save. Okay, okay. so that was about page layout. So all objects has one page layout. Even if you create one new, like a brand new custom object, that will also have one page layout. Automatically Salesforce will create, will create one page layout. Okay. Okay, okay. So far, any questions? Anything? Yeah. No. Okay, okay. So that was about the page layout. Now let's try to get into our buttons and links and how to create them, how to use them. Okay. Okay. So if you see, there are some buttons here. Okay. So all these buttons, these are the standard buttons. Submit for approval, clone, delete, edit. These are standard buttons. So just like these standard buttons, we can create some custom buttons as well, and we can place them on the right side section. Okay. So let's see how you can create that. So to create that, you could just just go to setup. Okay. And here, you can go to a customize section. Which object on which object do you want to create the um, the button so that you have to choose or which object you want to customize so that you have to choose from the customize section we'll choose the object let's say opportunities okay and here if we go on down here we have button links and actions so when we click on that we'll get an option to create new action button so new action is for the uh, lightning so we will be using as for classic new button or link. We'll be using this one okay so as of now there are so many buttons already provided so these are all are our custom buttons uh, sorry standard buttons add to campaign clone this is all stand buttons if you see here standard salesforce.com page hmm. okay so that means it's already it was already there and the, it's connected to salesforce standard page Okay, if you put add to campaign then it will jump to the campaign page and it will let you create one uh, campaign okay so it's taking you to the standard salesforce page that is why it's mentioned here so but delivery status this will take you to one url okay and like this javascript button it will take you to on click javascript okay so javascript will be triggered when you go ahead and when you click on this button okay let's see what types of buttons we can create so if you click on new button or link okay so here let's say we'll create one button uh, to trigger any website let's try to uh, okay google okay let's try to create a button which will uh, do one google search related to what all information we have okay let's say if you want to do something like that okay so in the description you can put uh, whatever information you want uh, google search okay so display type you want to create a button or you want to create a link link will be looking something like this and it will be underlined when you move the mouse it will be highlighted and when you click on it the same thing will happen so it mm -hmm. works in the similar way uh, as as button also but it looks like this and it has a different section for itself so buttons you can arrange here 
okay at the top of the page but the custom links will be have it uh, have it will have its own section in that section only you can put the custom links okay okay so as of now we'll create one button only detail page button okay and uh, if you click on that detail page button you want to send it over to a new tab or a new window or you want to okay you want to uh, keep it as a sidebar or something then you can go ahead and do that okay so as of now we'll keep it at the same new window okay and the source of the content you can add javascript also and you can add vf pages also let's say if you click on the button you want to um, like populate one vf page that you have created so that you can do that or if you want some javascript to be triggered so that also you can do okay so this button javascript button or url vf they are, these are very very handy i mean you can they uh, we will be using it most of the time to create any kind of requirement or any changes okay 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 so right now what we have is we are creating a google search button okay so here So here what we can do is let's say we take the website here okay we take the URL and what we do is we just paste it here okay and now okay now we will do quick save okay so we do quick save that means save was successful and it will take us to the same page it will keep us in the same page okay so we have created one button okay which will take us to www.google.co.in when you click on that it will open a new window and it will take us to that page okay let's see how it works okay if you refresh then that button will not appear here automatically by default the buttons or the links that we add that will not come in the page layout we have to add them manually to the page layout okay so here we have to do edit layout and then we have to go to buttons and if you see here the google button that we just created okay that button is appearing here now we can go and we can drop it in the custom button section if you see this one is turning green if you put it here it will not go so I have to put it here okay and now if you click on this button see that page is opening hello Srikanth? Yeah, bro, yeah. I'm in mute because a lot of noise here. So I'm in mute. I'm listening. Okay, okay, okay. <coughs> okay, so you, this is how you create a button. Okay, let's say uh, we want to add some parameters to this button. Okay, that also we can do. So let me show you. Let's say if you want to, uh, uh, let me tell you like this. let's say we have account name okay let's say you have the account name okay so in the account name let's say you want to search this account name in the Google directly when you click on that button automatically it should search okay with that particular account name so that also you can do let's say if you uh, how you can do is you you have to do a little bit of URL hacking okay like you have to manipulate the URL a little bit so how you can do that is uh, let's say we search something say Priyanka Chopra okay so this is how it is searching so if you check out the URL here okay in the URL let me take you Uh, not this one. see if you if you see this is the query string 
So in the query mm -hmm. string, whatever you put, okay, automatically that query string will be sent to the server and using the query, uh, query string, the, this first keyword and the second keyword, according to this, the search results mm -hmm. will appear. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to put the account name in this query string. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's say as of now what we have in our button is we have this link in our button. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you see here. Okay, and then we do search question mark and then you put Q equals to why is it huh. Q equals to let's say what is our account name uh, account name is Dell electronics so we will put let's say Q is equal to Dell okay now if you press enter if you see it is going to Dell so this mm -hmm. is where we have to put our account name so that it will automatically search with the query string okay and other than query string it has also something when we go to our URL okay some OQ is also there where also the string is being used okay and the search keyword is being used so there also we have to put one query string so uh am percent okay so that means that we have to concatenate with the am percent and then we have to add something like this so here what we can do is we did okay query is equal to del we did so here we'll put am percent q equals to uh, again we will put del and let's see what happens so this is more customizable like it is uh, searching using the keyword so this we have to take okay and this we have to put inside here and instead of hard coding it Dell okay as of now if you just quick save it okay so every time you click on this button automatically it will go to Google Dell, Dell only okay so yeah. if you refresh this Now if you click on this Google here, it is taking us to Dell because we have hard coded as Dell, but we don't want to hard code it. We want to make it as dynamic. It should automatically take the account name and according to the account name, it should search. Yes. Okay. So if you want to do that, then in, in place of this, what we have to do is we have to remove this and in place of, in place of this, we have to insert one merge field. Okay, so the object is the opportunity and the field we have to put from here. Let's say we put account name. Okay, so if you see here automatically it, it populated one formula. So opportunity dot account and so dynamically from the opportunity the account will be populated and it will be searched. So just like that here also we have to do one merge field. So here we'll, we'll put one account name. Okay, if you know, if you remember this, you can do it, man. you can type this manually also. Okay, and once we create our formula, then we'll check the syntax. So as of now, there's no issues with the syntax. So we'll go ahead and we'll quick save. Okay, now if we refresh. Now if we Google. So automatically searching with Dell Electronics. Okay, if you see here, our query is still the same. Query Dell plus this, Dell plus this. This is the names. This is the name of our account. So if you go to any other opportunity, okay, if you go to any other opportunity, let's say ABC opportunity. So it has account name different. Okay, its account name is mm -hmm. some new ABC tech. So if you go to Google. So now it's taking the new ABC tech. Okay. As this name doesn't exist any, it is not meaningful. So it's taking us to some random things. ABC, blah, blah, blah. Okay. 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 But it's working dynamically. Okay. It's taking the account name directly. Yes. 
okay so this is just one uh, use of you can see mostly it will not be used to go for google and all what it will do because most of the organizations will have connection to some other websites okay like some some other uh, some other uh, web applications it will be okay if you don't want the user to go ahead and click on that manually and try to open another tab and uh, like type the website so you don't want to do you want to put one button there so that when they click they will get one uh, like inline page only and here uh, that website will be appearing okay in that case you can just click on this and it will appear in the page only so for that kind of requirements we need this button okay okay and you can also put javascript inside that okay and how to do that so let's say i have already one javascript button let me see what it does okay so what i'll do is i will remove this button as of now this second button i'll just remove it the button section Get and remove this. Mm -hmm. Okay, save it. Okay, now let's try to create another button here. So this is done. We'll save this. Uh, let's create a new button or link. So let's say some button. I'll put one here. Okay, okay. So it will be like a page only, a page button only. So we'll keep keep it as button only. Display in a new window. Okay, that is fine. So we don't want URL. We want on-click JavaScript. So whenever you click on this, whatever JavaScript you have typed in the in the section here, that JavaScript will be populated here. Okay. Okay. So you can put the JavaScript inside this. And that will be populated. Uh, let's say something like, let's say alert. Hello. Let's see if this works. Okay. No okay. need to that semicolon. No need of semicolon. We will see. I'm not sure. Let's try. Okay. So if you refresh this automatically, that will not come. Okay. We'll have to put it in the page layout. So we edit the page layout and then we put the JavaScript button here and let's see if it's working or not. Okay, so we go to buttons here and our JavaScript button one is here. So we'll just drag it and we'll drop it in the section here. Okay, and then when you save. Okay, we have that button here. So when you click on that, so that alert is working. Yes. Okay, okay. So this could be something some kind of requirement like let's say you want to populate some or maybe uh, do some calculation and populate it up on this uh, alert window. Okay, or mm -hmm. maybe if you want to before one uh, before deleting this account, you want to populate one message that this will be account and this account will be or this opportunity will be deleted. Hello? Yes. Yeah, are you sure you want to delete like that? Yeah, something like that. Okay, so in those cases, you can go ahead and you can use this. Okay, or if you want to add some complex uh, functionalities in the JavaScript, also you can put all the JavaScript in that button and you can do that. You, it will be executing that. Okay. Okay, so something like uh, instead of alert, if you want some confirmation. Okay, so confirm. Okay, how do you actually compose the confirm? Uh, confirm JavaScript. 
let's see what is the syntax windows confirm so confirm this that will be yes and no okay mm -hmm. just like the same thing only so confirm are you sure you want to delete this record okay now we check the syntax and we quick save it okay okay now if we just refresh this page here we will click javascript button one and are you sure you want to delete the record okay but this did not do like that we need one true and false like that window one second Confirm. You want checkbox or what? Yeah, it's like a checkbox only. Okay. So the point is, is that, that in, yeah. Tell. While we creating agree, agree, agree all terms and conditions like that. We select, ha, like like that. that you want. Like that. Like that. Correct. Like that, correct. Then we have to write our own function. Huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. So the point default is, the, yes. Yeah, default function is not there. I think we have to write one function for that. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so the point I wanted to make is that you can put all the JavaScript that you want inside this. Okay, so you want uh, you can also go and concatenate something like this. Uh, what you can see is let's say opportunity. Um, let's say name. Okay, record. So delete this. Delete. So uh, now if we save it and now if we just refresh it once so it will automatically pick up the field whatever you want so using this uh, merge field okay so in the merge field you will have all the accounts all the fields so using the uh, this drop down here you can select and it will automatically populate the formula for you so now if you click on the JavaScript button it's asking you I uh, uh, <laughs> some problem with ABC is not defined so this was a problem with this particular string here okay. okay so you get merge fields here like this okay and you, you can insert the fields from here whichever field you want okay and that field will be inserted inside this okay so some complex javascript functions also if you want you can go ahead and do that okay okay so javascript is as i think you know better that it's only a client side okay so it will work only on the client side or like the browser it will not work in the server okay so all the client side logic whatever you want you can put in that button and you can go ahead and click on that okay so we'll be working with examples okay i'll get you some examples from my org only okay and then we can okay. customize and we can check okay so that is how javascript button will work now let's say if you want to have it as a visual force page okay if on click of that if you want to create one visual force page let's say if you want to override some button so let's say if uh, the user says that i if, if i click on this edit button so I don't want to have it as an edit function only like a default edit function. I want it to go to a visual force page and from there I can edit my page. Okay, and then I should be able to save it. So in that case, what we have to do is we have to create one new VF page. 
okay and that vf page we should give them the opportunity or uh, all the fields and then we have to create some buttons for save save new and all those things so he, he wants to override this page with our own page okay so in that case also we can go ahead and we can do that so what we have to do is we go back to our buttons okay uh, let's say we go back to setup okay and we go to customize okay and we go to our opportunities here buttons links and actions mm -hmm. and if you go to the edit button here so as of now the edit button has a standard salesforce.com page okay if you want to override mm -hmm. it with a vf page then you can do that you can just edit this okay and from here as of now there's no def uh, no override so it's using the default okay if you want to override it with a vf page you can go ahead and do that and from this you can go ahead and you can put the vf page as of now there's no vf page available in this particular no. org, so it's not showing any vf page okay so if you <coughs> it's just showing one panel grid i don't know what that vf page is so if you want to if you create one new vf page and if you add it for the override you can go ahead and do that okay, okay. so when we create vf page then we will be seeing like when you how to override our default buttons or if you want to create one new custom button how you can override that okay 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 so what it's saying that something like overriding standard buttons and links changes the meaning of the salesforce.com url and equals to the url such as salesforce.com page browser shortcut Externally, you can replace the salesforce.com url with standard button or links custom as object okay fine same thing okay so as of now we don't want to create anything like that if we have any vf page then we will be able to do that okay as of now in this org we don't have much vf pages so it is not showing us yeah. an option so we'll just cancel it okay or if you create some new button or link from this also you can go ahead and you can create some vf page instead of overall uh, url you just put vf page and you can add some vf, VF pages here okay and it will work just like that okay because by default also all these buttons are taking you to some vf page only okay but it's all standard so if you go and if you click mm. on uh, let's say edit okay it's taking you to one edit section this is another vf page okay so it is not the same it's it looks like it's the same but it is not it's another layout okay this is this page they have designed only for the view section okay so just like that we we also can create our own vf page and we can put all these fields and the sections depending on the profile to which profile we have to render to which profile we don't have to render all that we can also manage okay but we don't usually take that hassle we just leave it to the salesforce only so whatever salesforce has provided we use their functionality but all these features we can create in our own vf pages and we can put it here as well okay okay so once we start with vf pages then we can go ahead and we can see this thing okay 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 so another thing is our list view okay uh, let me just see here okay so there's something called list views as well so if you go to any of the uh, any of the objects or any of the tabs okay so the first thing that you see is a list view okay so this is one list view list view is it's like a table only so list view is like a table so in the table you have certain information provided to you okay let's say if you want to uh, view only the records which you have created that means uh, which is under my my account okay so only those records are showing here okay so if you click on all accounts here now it will show all the accounts which is there in your org okay so this is what a list view will look like okay and let's say if you want to create another list view to display some information let's say you want to open so only the information which is only the opportunities which are uh, let's say closed one or uh, maybe closed lost so you want to check out those information in one click 
so you just change the layout and then it should display so in that case you can just create a new view here okay we'll say something like uh, let's say uh, prospecting opportunity okay prospecting means in which is on the way which is not closed one or which is not closed lost okay that's all uh, that's called a prospecting let's say all accounts only we want to show all the accounts which is prospecting so we want to put some filter condition here uh, in which uh, how do we put the filter condition it depends on the stage okay prospecting closed one closed lost all that depends on the stage only so here we will choose stage uh, so we will choose stage hmm where is stage all accounts oh we are in accounts sure i'm giving you example of opportunity okay so from here if we create one new view for the opportunity so let's say here we can create one prospecting offer let's say ops we'll say ops only no problem all opportunities from here we have to choose one field which is stage so let's say stage is not equal to it should not be equal to closed one and it should not be equal to closed lost you can choose both of them here only but I want to show you something like adding two formulas together so stage not equals to closed one and you can one is closed lost Locked. okay and then what are the fields which is uh, which you want to be available in your uh, list view so by default these many few uh, fields are already there if you want you can add some more fields let's say you want to add some probability also just add it okay uh, maybe you want to add the stage also stage is already there okay uh, whatever fields you want you can just go ahead and add it no problem and after that every list view is connected to one security one folder okay if you want that particular list view to be visible only to you okay and not to like you don't want to create it for everybody okay because everybody okay. if they tries to create list views then it will be like whole crowded and if they want it to populate for everybody then it will be like every day somebody will be seeing one new list view so mm -hmm. in order to avoid that if they if they want if you don't if they don't want you to create one list view, you can create it for yourself for your personal use so it will show only in your organization or in your login it will not show for others okay or if you want to create it only for a group of people like uh, maybe your team okay your manager asks you to create mm -hmm. one list view only for the your team's use so in that case you can go ahead and create one for your group and here we will not see groups as of now because we don't have any group i don't i have not created any public group so you can create a group of let's say five six people or five six login users and they will be displaying here so you can share the list view with those people okay okay that also you can do so as of now let's say i want to it to be visible only to me okay and then we will save okay so the prospecting opportunity will show you the stage only the one which is not equal to closed one and not equal to closed lost okay so all these are open opportunities okay so as it's my opportunity then obviously opportunity owner alias will be all mine so i don't want to see my email here because it's i know what it is i know it's mine only so in that case what you can do is you can just edit it and you can remove that field from here okay you can owner alias i don't want i just remove it account name is fine amount is fine close it okay that is okay now we'll save so that is now removed from here yes. okay okay and even in the like fields how do you want to arrange all those things you can manage from this okay. yeah so from here you can also if you want opportunity name to be maybe somewhere in the down 
or the opportunity name should be in the up or then probability should be there after that we want stage yes. and account name then after that we want to let's close date okay then amount and in the end we want account name so that's how you can arrange it and now if you see here that will be arranged in the same sequence okay so opportunity name prospect probability stage blah 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 it's coming in that sequence okay okay so using vf pages we can create list view also so in salesforce whatever you see okay new button section new link section all these things you can override and you can create your own vf pages and you can put in there okay like this pagination this is called pagination okay like if you click on this it will show only the ones which is for d okay for c so like that so this is called pagination so this pagination and all these things we can also create in vf pages okay so visual force pages are very very powerful because it is come connected to the apex controller okay so using apex only it's able to handle all those things and it is able to connect to the server okay because apex has soql also using soql we can query and you can insert all those things you can do so because of apex vf page and soql our programming will become very powerful okay 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 so you want all of them okay so this is what list view is okay so you can go ahead and you can practice you try to create some more list views on different different other objects okay create some buttons okay create some custom mm -hmm. buttons connect it with some websites okay if you know javascript better then you can add support javascript functionality in the javascript buttons and you can add it there okay okay in that cases you can go ahead and you can do okay. okay so i wanted to try one thing let's say if you go here okay, let's click f12 here mm, let me let's check out this okay let's one class is already there and it's inner HTML is ABC opportunity h2 class is equal to class a page description but I its ID is not mentioned now then how will I get it the class I mean, we can class sorry yeah we can target with the class name bro page description with class name also we can target yeah we want to change of abc.op we can change by by in css we can give dot page description and we can write color the color red if you give color red it will change to red color but abc.op hmm okay we can target with class name let's do that change color okay change color uh, change color of our uh, opportunity name okay and we put it JavaScript so here let's say I want document dot get element by class name is it like this yes class name okay in this what is the class name here page description we put page description okay okay dot uh, style dot color maybe something like this so here if you put red and now let me just verify that Color with JavaScript. Get element by ID. Uh, body dot style dot background color. Okay. They're not targeting it. Huh, they are not targeting. I just want to see this. Uh, body dot style. Nah, style will work, right? Style dot color. If we choose, then font color should change. 
so style dot color equals to red single quotes that uh, this should work let's just check our syntax it will I don't think it will be able to debug JavaScript syntax but anyways yes. as long as it lets us save it then it's fine okay Ah, I did not add it in the page layout. Okay, let me just edit the layout, add it quickly. Let me see if it is working or not. So we go to buttons here, my JavaScript button. Eh? This is what I name it. Anyway, change color. It's an opportunity. Editing opportunity only. Where is that? Change color. Uh, I created one page link here. That's why it was not coming here. Okay, I'll save again. Now I'll create one page button. Now if we refresh, now it should come. Okay, go to buttons. My JavaScript button is here. Just drag it and we'll drop it here. And we save it. Okay. Now all, everything is black only. Now my JavaScript button. To click on this. No, no, not this one. Uh, yeah. Change color. We created name change color. But why is it not coming here? Detail page button on. Click JavaScript button. Okay. Change color button is there, name is there. Not get learned by any opportunity we don't want. Okay, we save it. So the change color button is here. So it's on click JavaScript. Okay, fine. And we also added that in the page layout. But why is not it appearing? Change color. We have to add that. But we added that last time also. Yeah? It's not coming. Okay, we'll add it again. No problem. We'll save it again. <sighs> okay, it's coming here now. Mm. Okay, now let's try to click on this. Problem with the JavaScript button has been linked and counter document dot get element by class name is not a function. Probably we typed it wrong. Let's try to check what is the correct syntax. Get element by class name. Get elements by class name. By class name. Element. Only element bro. JavaScript element by class name get elements by class name here but uh, is not a function get element by class let's try this let's try this document dot in class yeah. class name also we have to go place in uh, single quotes we did now ha huh, we did single quotes yeah Class name should be in single quotes. Yeah, yeah, we did, we did. We did. So, class name we have done in the single quotes. Page description. Is this correct? We'll just see. Page description. We'll just copy it. Okay. Okay. Quick save. It's get elements. There's nothing called get element by ID. They gets elements by class name. It is there. Okay. 
get element instead of it seems you have misspelled okay undefined function instead of use okay we'll try we'll try or get elements by class name and let us see if it's working or let's check out what is the error f12 refresh okay so now we click on change color uh problem on click javascript button encountered document dot get elements by class name style is not if un is undefined Okay, document dot get elements by class name zero dot in HTML equals to work. Okay, let's try. Maybe the get elements by class name is returning an array. So let's try getting the first one dot style dot color. Let's check this out. Let's show you now. Let me see. Ah, okay. So now it is working. But, uh, huh? In double quotes, we need to place. No, no, no. The, the, code. the problem was that this is an array. Okay, get elements by class name is returning an array of all the mm -hmm. class okay or all the elements which is using this class name because okay. see one this this class name can be used by others as well right mm. so if you go to here this is not an id id is unique okay mm. but style class name yes. is what css class name is css only na so this class can yes. be used by here also na so let's say Let's say here if we change the class name to what page description. Okay. So now this class this this thing is also using the same class name. Okay. Mm. So now in this case, mm. if you use this formula page description zero, then it will take the first one. First one is which one? This one. Then it will take mm. this one. So so in using the class name, it is returning all the it's returning in form of array. So in the array you have to form uh, like give the first one dot if you want to access the first one if you want to access the second one you have to give like one or maybe like this dot style okay so this is an array so that this is, is not there in JavaScript in JavaScript it will I mean use one class name it affect all classes no no this is JavaScript only bro. JavaScript. JavaScript only, but we won't use like this, no array type. I never use. See here what they have mentioned. This Stack Overflow only. They are talking about JavaScript only. See what is yeah. instead you used get element by class name. Okay, what they have said that class based selection returns an array of objects. Okay, which is mm. uh, because of multiple elements have same class. That's what I said. That multiple elements can have the same class also. Okay. No, no. Here you see they mention we have to use get elements if if they use multiple of times. Otherwise, we can use get element by ID. That is no. Yes. Here, if the page description is multiple times, then we have to use get elements by class name. If they use only one time, then we can use get element by name. No, no. See, there is no function called get element by class name. There's no function. You have a function yeah. called get element by ID, but get elements by class name. You, if you search any function, you uh, okay, you search. Okay, today what you do is you search and you find me one function name with get element element by class name. name. Class name. Okay, and you should not put one s here. Okay, using the class name, you have to return one element. 
okay mm. so just search and you find and let me know if you can find one uh, class name uh, sorry a function with the name of get element by class name in javascript only okay okay you search and you find this and, and you let me know okay if there is any function available in this name or not okay you search w3 schools or you search mozilla one academy is there so all that wherever you can just uh, let me know okay no 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 it's not <laughs> okay but we own huh? most of the time we use id only no we target by id huh. but we use class name also okay see if you target by id then you have function called get get uh, get element by id then there there is no s yeah. okay because id is yes. always unique id is unique yeah. and it will not return any array but the style is not mm. unique no the style you can apply to any div yes okay so let's yeah. say if you apply the same style to another div then it is using the same mm. style so in that case it will be returning you an array so that is why it's get elements by class name and not get element okay. by class name if you got the point okay okay yes okay anyway we got into javascript <laughs> okay no problem so uh, that's it from my side uh, as of now you have any questions any doubts you want to ask anything no bro i will try this today this whole part customization okay so you try some complex javascripts as well and see i think it should work only because if simple this is working then the other things will also work so this is this is like a baby step only but you try something complex maybe you want to uh, uh, try to display some of the values here okay maybe in the alert section or confirm if you want to delete this record something like that okay 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 you try and you let me know if you get any questions any doubts okay 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 yeah okay so okay then see you tomorrow bye bye